Lake Mead is still drying out. A once unthinkable day is looming on the Colorado River. Barring a sudden end to the southwest 11 year drought, the distribution of the river's dwindling bounty is likely to be reordered as early as next year because the flow of water cannot keep pace with the region's demands much longer. For the first time, federal estimates issued in August indicate that Lake Mead, the heart of the lower Colorado Basin's water system, irrigating wheat, lettuce, and onions, and reclaimed corners of the Sonoran Desert, and lawns and golf courses from Las Vegas to Los Angeles, could drop below a crucial demarcation line of 1,075 feet. If it does, that will set in motion a temporary distribution plan approved in 2007 by the seven states of claims to the river and by the Federal Bureau of Reclamation and water deliveries to Arizona and Nevada would be reduced. This could mean more dry lawns, shorter showers, and fallow fields in those states, although conservation efforts might help them adjust to the cutbacks. California, which has first call on the Colorado River flows in the lower basin, would not be affected. But the operating plan also lays out a proposal to prevent Lake Mead from dropping below the trigger point. It allows water managers to send 40% more water than usual downstream to Lake Mead from Lake Powell in Utah, the river's other big reservoir, which now contains about 50% more water than Lake Mead. So in that case, the shortage declaration would be avoided and Lake Mead's levels restored to 1,100 feet or so, at least in the meantime. But in general, the southwestern United States is drying out. The weather is getting warmer and drier because of climate change or global warming, whatever have you call it. Lake Powell fed by rain and snowmelt that create the Colorado and tributaries has risen more than 60 feet from a 2004 low because the upper basin states, Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming, and Utah, do not use their full allocations, at least not yet. The upper basin provides a minimum annual flow of 8.23 million acre feet to Arizona, Nevada, and California. An acre foot of water is generally considered the amount two families of four use annually. In its August report, the Bureau of Reclamation said the extra replenishment from Lake Powell was the likeliest outcome. Nonetheless, said Terry Fulp, the Bureau's Deputy Regional Director for the Lower Colorado Region, it is the first time ever that the Bureau has judged a critical shortage to be remotely possible in the near future. We are approaching the magical line that would trigger shortage, he said. We have the lowest 11 year average and the 100 year plus recorded history of flows on the basin. The reservoir is now less than 15 inches above the all time low of 1,083 point two feet set in 1956. But back then, while the demand from California farmland was similar, if not greater, the population was much smaller. Perhaps 9.5 million people in the three states and the lower Colorado River Basin depended on the supply in the late 1950s. But today, more than 28 million people do. The impact of the declining water level is visible in the alkaline bathtub rings on the reservoir's walls and the warning lights for mariners high on its rocky outcroppings. National Park Service employees have repeatedly moved marinas chasing the receding waterline. 
adding to water managers' unease. Scientists now predict that prolonged droughts will be more frequent in the decades to come as the southwest climate warms. As Lake Mead's level drops, Hoover Dam's capacity to generate electricity, which, like the Colorado River water, is sent around the southwest, diminishes with it. So, if Lake Mead levels fall to 1,050 feet, it may be impossible to use the dam's turbines and the flow of electricity could cease. The worry that dominates today's discussions about the river contrasts with the old-style optimism about the Colorado's plentitude that has usually prevailed since Hoover Dam, then called Boulder Dam, was completed 75 years ago, impounding the water from Lake Mead. The worries have provoked action. Cities like Phoenix and Las Vegas have undertaken extensive conservation programs. Between 2000 and 2009, Phoenix's average per capita daily household use has dropped almost 20%. Las Vegas's has dropped 21.3%. Nonetheless, if the river flow continues downward and we can't build back up supply, Las Vegas is in big, big trouble, said the general manager of the Southern Nevada Water Authority. While Las Vegas is one of the Colorado River's smaller clients, it consumes 2% of the river's allocated deliveries. The city relies on Lake Mead for some 90% of its water supply. From 2002 to 2009, the metropolitan area's population mushroomed by nearly 40% to 1.9 million from 1.37 million. In response to the population boom and the drought, which began in 1999, the authority began an aggressive effort to encourage water conservation in 2002. Now it is expanding its options. It is tunneling under the bottom of Lake Mead to install a third intake valve that could continue operating until lake levels dropped below 1,000 feet. Saddle Island, the construction staging site on the reservoir, looks like an abstract painting. It's dusty, russet ground covered with interlacing segments of the 2,500 concrete rings that will make up the three-mile-long pipe. Most contentious is a planned 285-mile pipeline that would cross the state diagonally and take groundwater from the Snake Valley on the Nevada-Utah border to Las Vegas. The authority has also spent some $147 million on a program to encourage homeowners and businesses to eliminate their lawns in favor of the rock, grass, and cactus landscaping, known as xeriscaping. More than 70% of household water usage is attributed to outdoor use. Residents can now water their yards only three days a week before 11 a.m. and after 7 p.m. and the restrictions are set to tighten this winter. But the 1,075 foot level is broken at Lake Mead next year. More drastic conservation measures will be needed, officials warn. We have a very finite resource and demand which increases and enlarges every day, said a Wyoming lawyer and the president of the Colorado River Water Users Association. The problem is always going to be there, he said. Everything is driven by that problem. Because, again, it is a very finite resource and demand which increases and enlarges every day, day by day. And yes, Southwest climate is getting warmer. 
and in turn could be getting drier. So what to do? And all these are more signs of the end times transition days which is a continuing day by day process happening all around the world. Isaiah chapter 55 Oh, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters, and he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat, yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. 2. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. 3. Incline your ear, and come unto me here, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. 4. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. 5. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run into thee, because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of everything, for he has glorified thee. 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. 7. That the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteousness man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord God Almighty. 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 10. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven returns not thither, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. 12. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. 13. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And there are many kinds of signs happening daily all around the world.